Got Your Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. Breathe, Oiler fan. Breathe. That was a heck of a game. Blown leads, scraps, weird calls. Had a little bit of everything. Oilers victorious in overtime against the Winnipeg Jets. And looking forward to breaking it down with Jason Strudwick. Coming to you for our podcast tonight from our long shot studio here in Sherwood Park. More than just golf, it's a sports destination. Locations on Stony Plain Road. And in Sherwood Park, that is Long Shots Golf. And as always, got your back brought to you by our proud title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. Trying to sell 400 cars this month, getting down to the wire. So if you're even thinking about a new vehicle right now, you have to go to Sherwood Buick GMC just off Baseline Road in Sherwood Park. Phil gets obsessed with these goals, and they're getting close. So he's going to write deals. Get down there if you're thinking about it. It's 10 Mall Road, just off Baseline Road. GMCPod.com is the website where you can go see everything that they have to offer. That is Sherwood Buick GMC. As we welcome in Jason Strudwick. And Steve, why don't you hop in uh, too here, buddy? How you doing, Steve-O? Good, boys. How are you? Rock solid, Struddy. How's it going? But you got a little sweat on, a little glistening, a little <laughs> no. post workout pod. No, no, not at all. No, this is uh, just a day of spring break with the kids, right? So, what's, what's on your shoulder? Is that like a is an ascot? Uh, that's a scarf my, uh, or like no, that's that? my hoodie. That's oh, hoodie. you're disheveled. You're a little disheveled. No, no, that's just the style. I like, I try to look a little bit kind of relaxed, uh, sexy, dirty is the look I look cool for. <laughs> you're going. You oh, as he gives us the middle finger, applying chapstick. You need no, to do something about that middle finger. No, that's the way you do it. You, I do it all the time. The finger, it's it's the most level. It doesn't have a curve. It's very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but you're flipping the world, the bird on the pod. You do it that's, once a pod. That's not the that's not the reason. It's if my other fingers were straighter, like I my my one finger, see has a curve. The middle straight is an whoa, arrow. Whoa, whoa. So I can apply it fine. Hey, oh, oh there goes the rating of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I hey, just Steve. talking about the yep. curvature of my fingers. Yeah. yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Uh, gross, first of all. Uh Steve, I wanted to bring you in early here because uh so you are an Oiler fan. Like yep. you're unabashed Oiler fans, right? Hardcore. I don't cheer. I cover the team. I don't cheer. Struds yep. is somewhere in between. Uh, and this one was a nervous one for you. This one was gut wrenching for you, as other Oilers fans are experiencing right now. It was when you have to rely on your goaltender like that, and there's so many grade A chances. It's uh, super fun to watch, but also super stressful. And uh, yeah, I mean both 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 sides, right? I mean that first period was just it was awesome. Yeah. On the edge of the seat. Yeah, that was a great game. That's what you want yeah. if you win. Well, Steve will be behind the scenes taking comments on our YouTube uh, stream. And he'll be getting them ready for Ask Us Anything a little bit later on. So ask uh, us anything you want to ask us. And uh, Steve will be tracking those. Um, Struds, are you you fan, Struds? You cheer? You played for the team? You bleed the colors at all? Where, where Where's your head at on it? You know what? I, you feel about I, it? I just know how hard the guys work and how yeah. every player works to have success. And I want this team to have success. So, yeah, I guess I, I – like. When they, when they, like when the Connor Brown scored today, I was happy, but it's just because I know how bad that feels and the grind and like just how he must not be sleeping. Now he's starting to feel it. So I, I think it, it, it does come from a place of wanting the team to do well, but I just want individual players just to have success because they work so, so hard. And I, but I, I guess I'd say that about a lot of teams I watch, but if, definitely the I definitely want to see them do well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, they almost let this one get away tonight, but of all things, their penalty kill came through huge for them. And after all the heat we put on them the other night, pretty fitting. So let's get to talking some details in our breakdown brought to you by our great friends over at Adrenaline Diesel. So they're Edmonton's heavy duty diesel truck and repair shop. They've got a number of drop-in ready diesel engines that are available for purchase, installation, or conversion. If you're in the market right now, if that's your business, They've got a couple of restored trucks for sale, a 2018 Peterbilt, 
a 2010 International Pro Star, and a 2015 Volvo VNL. Drop in to see all they have to offer. 13019, 151st Street Northwest. Adrenaline Diesel. Love the name they picked. Adrenaline Diesel. Solid logo, solid name, Struddy. Yeah, it goes a long ways. You're big about the logos, bud. It's all about the branding, man. It's us either. It's all <laughs> yeah. about the branding. By the way, your your hoodie thing is throwing me off. Like I, I feel like uh, it's, you just got it sitting there on your shoulder, all casual. And you're telling me of everything I do on this podcast, the thing that bothers the most is the way my hoodie is falling over my. Well, no, I, I objected to you flipping us the bird multiple times, but oh, that's fair. That, that's is, fair. Is it? Is it? Is it a side? <laughs> is it no, a side hoodie? Just... You can sit back and just don't let her fall. Oh, okay. That's yeah, that's, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's the way the kids are wearing it. I get lots of compliments daily <laughs> on this hoodie. I so kind of miss it now. <laughs> yeah. <that's> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Struds, let's get to breaking this thing down a little bit. You know what? I'm going to put it out there for you. Normally, I try and figure out where the right place to start is, but I'm going to let you drive the ship a little bit tonight in analyzing this game, and I want to see where your brain takes us as the main thing that we should start with tonight. <laughs> um, well, I think I'm going to start in the second period. I'm going to skip a whole 20 minutes. That, <laughs> Just that, forget that, that first, game, yeah. And, and it wasn't that I thought the first was bad, um, and I thought that the Jets carried – more of the, the first period than the Oilers did, but then the second, the Oilers just came out and said, and the third, uh, you know, except for maybe uh, those two goals in there. But they decided we're going to get this done. We're going to get this win, and they yeah. started playing the way that I think they need to play. And so I guess you know, not to go too crazy, but I I thought that this was one of their better games in a while, where it was wait like line after line after line was going and skating and putting pressure on Nashville, um, you know, moving the puck forward, making a play, making them or sorry, Nashville on Winnipeg making them turn and go get the puck. So I love the way they played, especially in that second. I thought they were really up on their toes and everyone was contributing in that period. Yeah, they definitely wanted to grab after a, a first period that was okay. It was competitive. Uh, okay. It was okay. Fair. Uh, yeah. I think they came out, they wanted to see if they could assert themselves. But remember, Winnipeg is a hell of a good team. And I know that they've they've lost uh, three in a row, now four in a row, I guess. Um, but they can play, man. They can play with anybody in the league. And so when the Oilers picked up their tempo, I thought Winnipeg kind of did too. And uh, and then they pushed back really hard in the third period. Okay, I want to talk about, let's get to the physicality first because that was earlier on in the game. So there have been a couple of criticisms that we've had in recent games about this team. One was a penalty kill, we'll get there. But the physicality was another one. And Corey Perry, maybe recognizing his team, didn't have the best of starts, gets into it with a guy he's probably got no business getting into it with. <laughs> like that, that, I know Stanley's not necessarily known as a big heavyweight or anything. That takes courage to do what Corey Perry did. <laughs> but he just gets it. You know, Corey understands that sometimes you have to do something to get your, your teams fired up. You're, and he it wasn't like Logan Stanley initiated that. Corey was looking for it, right? And he knows exactly how to get after people and to make it happen. So I love that. I love that response by him, uh, or I guess not response, but that initiative uh, process you took there with, with the big guy. But I thought tonight, as opposed to what we saw, you know, for sure in Toronto, maybe not so much in Ottawa, but I thought the orders came out and they decided they're going to be a little bit bullies. And they have yeah. players that can be bullies and they need those players to be bullies. I saw Vinny Darnay hitting a couple guys hard. It was one, um, I want to say the third period, Nita Rider behind the net, bang, down Nita Rider goes. And he pops back up. It doesn't matter if the guy gets up or not. The fact is that you put him on the ground in the first place. That's his job. We saw that from Edmondson. We saw that from McCabe. Two guys that are big, but they're not exactly killers. Nurse tonight, I thought he was more assertive. Um, you know, and we could go through the lineup. Kane had quite a few. It's like everyone is, even Derek Ryan on the penalty kill. He threw a hit on, I want to say, Shifley, was able to get the puck yeah. out, then they iced it down. Like, that is how you have to be. You have to have a pack bully mentality. And I think that's really helped Soilers uh, in other areas of the game, Shogger. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And, and for Nurse, like, Perry got dumped into the bench there. And then I think Dylan gave him another shot after he pulled himself out of the, of the, the bench. And that's yeah. sort of what spurred Nurse to go over there and do that. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of that from Darnell Nurse. And, I, you know, again, I'm not advocating that people need to be going and punching each other in the head. But that, to me, was Darnell Nurse kind of asserting himself in a little bit of a, a different way, re-engaging. We talked about how he'd become a little bit more docile here this season. 
And I thought he did a really good job kind of bringing that aggression back into his game. And, and he's good when he plays like that, Struts. Like a docile nurse is not what you want. So he he sees that hit from Perry. And, you know, Perry's flopping in the bench. And, like, you know how he does it. And yeah. Dylan gives another shot and he slashes him. And I love that. I love that response by Darnell. You just skate over and said, bud, that doesn't work for me. And you just fight the guy. And not that Dylan's scared. Like, that, I love kind of Dylan, too. I really like him. But... And he's having an incredible year. Eight goals, good for him. Like, I think that's a great story. Um, but I love that just Darnell skates over. It's like, no, that doesn't work for me. And Darnell has to have that. He's got to have that, 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 uh, that vibe around him that he thinks he is the baddest ass on the ice at any given time, yeah. but still can play. Like I, I, I let's make my, I want to make my point clear here, Shaga. I don't, he doesn't have to run around and and you know karate chop guys or spear guys. But he has to act and have swagger that he is bad and that he doesn't like anyone on the ice. And when you play against him, it's not going to be fun. And and we're starting to see that, right? I think that maybe Toronto is a little bit of a, a wake-up call for him. Or yeah. not, that's unfair. A reminder. A reminder of what he has to be. We saw it tonight. I'll call it a wake-up call, man. And, I'll, and I, he, think, I think that's fine. That's fair. But I want to see it against the Kings. What does he do against the Kings? And I get that guys now on social media are friends, but – it doesn't matter. I, I I don't really care how this guy feels about me in that moment. I have to make him feel bad about himself on that ice for the next ten shifts or whatever it is. You know when he when he gets through a game, you need to have that experience against that guy. You got to earn that though. Like you talk about this feeling where you can skate around like you're the baddest guy on the ice, and you know that, and you play with that in mind, and you like Darnell Nurse earned that a while back. He did. He was you know he was he had established himself as that hasn't been the last little while and i don't i don't think that's something you you should or, or that he would you know feel necessarily and unless you're going out there and doing things to earn that and when darnell nurse owns that identity he's a better player day to day to day but he'd kind of given up that part of his game a little bit set it to the side to focus on some other things and i think it's important he recapture it struds because you can't pretend with that you're either living that and playing that or you're not and he hasn't been for a while so is he going to now? It's about delivering that consistency of, of that style of play. No. Again, it isn't the fight. And quite honestly, when you're competing and going that hard all the time, you don't really have to fight that often. You know, it's the threat of the fight. But look at the guys he's going to be playing against. So let's look at the next game. Um, Kempe, it'll be no. uh, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. It's no. going to be, um, you know, those those top six kind of guys. They're not looking to fight. Quinton, you think Quinton Byfield wants to fight Darnell no, Nurse? No. No, so you don't have to, but when you need to do, you need to keep working them over little shots, putting them down, knocking them down. Yeah, you take the odd penalty, and because they don't want to fight you, but you keep beating them down, beating them down, beating them down. Eventually, they kind of become they might take a little bit longer road to get to the front of the net or to the corner, and that's what it is. So, it's it's not the th the, the fighting, it's the threat of, of being kind Medicine, of beat, mean, yeah, beat down all the time. That's the difference, and I think. Not to compare the two, but Chris Pronger, I don't know that he even had five, ten fights his whole career, but it was always so nasty. And you he knew if, or you knew if you ran him, the next time he came down, he'd try to break your wrist with a slash. And and that's the genius that was Chris Pronger on top of all the skills in hockey IQ. You know who I think set the tone for the orders physically tonight? Who's that? I might be a little bit surprised by this. Did you see the hit Leon Dreisaitl tried to throw <laughs> and missed? Yeah. yeah. See, I think it's yeah. noticeable when those guys do that. Yeah. When Connor, whether you hit him or not or whatever, yeah. like Leon Dreisaitl went in there with nasty intentions, and yeah. it was like a board rattler. Yeah. So I just think when Leon Dreisaitl does that early in a game, it sends a message to everybody like, we're here to play, and we're not going to tiptoe through the tulips tonight. I'm not going to overstate it, Struddy, but I noticed it and I thought, oh, okay. And I felt like the team kind of followed suit a little bit there. Am I reading too much into a missed check? No, no, I think it, it does set the tone. But I, I wonder if there was a conversation from the coaches or from the leadership group yeah. about being more physical. Yeah. Um, because I, I do, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt last year, for the most part, they were more, of, they felt like a more of a bully team. Like they were just out there and maybe you and I got away from well talking about it here on this podcast so yeah. we're just as guilty as the players although we're not playing but I, I just think that that bully attitude where you just if there's one there's five and everyone's going hard and we're all you know 
not running out of way to get checks, but when there's the opportunity, you're finishing a check. And I think that does wear a team down. And then you layer your skill on top of that. And what's been pretty organized coaching, it's not much fun to play against a team like that. Okay, let's talk about the penalty kill and that call. Oh, my goodness. I guess that's why the Board of Governors is suggesting a change to that rule. That <laughs> will be reviewable. Is it friendly fire? And that will become something that the video coaches have to keep a close eye on and now have in their holster the ability to, to fire off a review for something like that. That is a prime example. Two minutes left in a game, a tie game, and a high stick that clearly was not him. The NHL is doing the right thing here, Struds, based on what we saw tonight. But more importantly, the penalty kill came up massive for this group tonight. So as I was watching in real time, I'm like, I don't think that's his penalty because it was like it's a right hand shot and a left hand stick. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't look the same, right? Coming up, I didn't even ground. notice that, but yeah, yeah. okay. And and, it, and so that to me, it, and it's scary if I'm noticing that from a distance. I'm not even on that ice. And then the refs don't notice the difference with the lefty versus the righty because it looks different where your hand is on the stick, obviously, right? Like, so anyways, I'm, I'm going to give the refs a pass. They make mistakes. It could have been the difference in the game. It wasn't. But let's talk about that penalty kill. And uh, the whole situation penalty kill was absolutely great. You know, uh, Connor Brown scores that 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 goal, a huge goal for the Oilers. And he, he quickly gets a, a, a four-minuter. And the Oilers, I believe they didn't give up one shot on that on that penalty. They didn't. Kill. Yeah, nothing. And they were assertive. It wasn't lucky. It wasn't like Winnipeg was missing the net. They were assertive. And I can't remember who it might have been Fogel after the second period mentioned it. They had some great clears. They got that puck and there were very few times, if if any, where it didn't get out immediately after a touch and owner stick, bang, and down the ice it goes. And even like I said, I'll go review that. We're uh uh what's his name? Derek Ryan takes a good run at uh Shifley instead of playing the puck, plays the body. Puck gets coughed out, boom, and it's down the ice right away. So very assertive, on their toes, the exact opposite of what we saw in Ottawa uh, Sunday night. Yeah, for sure. Man, they came up big. And a penalty-killing unit that had been uh, had been under fire here in recent games. Let's get to the Weiss Johnson Twitter mentions. Uh, Weiss Johnson's offering $200 off their Fantech HEPA filter system. Be proactive. Keep the air in your home clean, right? If we have another forest fire season this year, like in years past, and we truly hope that we don't, but if we do, this filtration system will take the smoke out of the air in your home and be especially helpful to those with respiratory issues. So you got to feel comfortable. You know, we all know what it feels like when that smoke settles in. And if you can make it comfortable inside your house, uh, call Weiss Johnson. The website is weiss-johnson.com. Okay, Johnny Japan says, bit worried about how the Oilers are giving up leads again. Weren't we supposed to have fixed that? So the Oilers with a 3-1 third period lead struds look to have things well in hand and then ba-bang, ba-bang, bang. And all of a sudden, uh, in almost no time, it's a tie game. What did you think of that tilt back uh, Winnipeg's way and what happened? So last year, one of the Oilers issues was you know, giving up a goal and then I've given another goal up right away again. And we saw it tonight. And I, that's the first thing I saw when I, I think it was Monaghan's was the third goal, right? If, I, if I'm correct. Was this the uh, third? Monaghan was the Monaghan. Yeah, the tip. Uh, yeah, the tip. So off of that play, I saw two small layers there that led to the goal. The first one was both um, Henrique and Drysaddle both go to the D-man on the point uh, to try to, to block the shot. Um, that that just can't happen. You don't need two guys going after the same guy. Now, it didn't affect the play behind them, but it could have. But two guys don't have to go to the same play. And then for some reason, Darnell was in front. And then I don't know if he thought, I'd love to know what he was like, what his thought process was there. Maybe he thought the Dean was going to throw in the corner because he took a step to his left to go to the corner. And that left Monahan all by himself in front. And he couldn't get back in time to tie the, tie the stick up. Right. Now, again, I don't know what Darnell saw because he was on the ice. Maybe he saw a guy looking like he's going to throw in the corner, but it didn't go there. And so those two small breakdowns um, make the difference. And, and you know, that these are your veteran guys, Henrique, Drysaddle, and Nurse. They're the veteran guys. You don't expect that to happen with your veteran players. So that was just the third goal. Can I add another layer to that? Sure. I didn't like the face-off, right? The, like, Drysaddle kind of lost the draw, but it was a puck that was up for grabs. And both Winnipeg players beat both Oiler players. It was CC okay. and a winger 
off the draw. So often we look at a lost draw like that on a penalty kill and you think you blame the center, right? But but it's not just about the center on faceoffs. And if you're diligent and if you get the hop and if you're, you know, if you get the jump, you can really help a center out. And I think that, that was uh I wouldn't call it a 50-50 puck. But I thought that the Oilers had a chance to grab that puck, even though Dreisaitl didn't necessarily grab that draw the way that he might have liked. Uh, by the way, uh, who said that? Shout out to Rashog's mechanical pencil. Uh, somebody oh, wow. threw that one in on the stream. Yeah, I don't even. I dug. I dug into my. Uh, Jeez. You like the pen pencil? You remember that from? That I love it. I, I still. I don't think I have one here. I. But yeah, I do. I do like them. Yeah, you got to re reload it. Yeah, really. The, uh, no, these I think they're just disposables, that, aren't they? You don't reload these, do you? Okay, don't don't worry about the environment. That's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> just <laughs> just throw them out. Throwing away fifteen <laughs> this week. Fifteen this week isn't that bad. <laughs> uh, okay, let's. We might. Uh, we got to talk about uh, the overtime winner here, Zach Hyman, uh, after getting his fiftieth. Um, what do you think of the play? Well, you could tell that the the big guys are getting a little fatigued. The big guys being uh, Connor and Leon. Uh, that I believe it was Connor that changed, and then, uh, or was it maybe Leon that changed? But anyways, and then the other one changes, and Hyman jumps out there fresh. I love, yeah. I love when teams change as they're going up the ice attacking. Yeah. Three on three, a little bit harder to do. Like I, 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 I'm not, but in that moment we can change because you're getting someone who at best is 10, 15 seconds on the ice for the other team, and at worst they've now been out there 30, 40. So you're jumping out there. Nice play by Luz to step up, uh, to stop up, and and then Hyman gets it, and he doesn't just shoot; he kind of cuts to the middle, gets it, one shot, then rebound, shot, and uh, and goal, I should say. And I love that play. I mean, it's that's just a Zach Hyman goal, right? Like you just keep digging and digging, and it's a skilled play to get into the area to get the shot, but it was that that extra jump to get there for that rebound. So um very fitting that he scored, and I was really happy that it was he and Nuge that scored, just so those guys can get some feeling of that on the three on three as well yeah good night for nugent hopkins as well right to uh, you know feel that puck oh. going in a couple of points for, i mean he was due 13 i mean connor brown gets another one too like the, good night for a few guys that needed it well it, there's no doubt about it and and you know i believe we talked about it on the other night with nuge you know how often we've seen him get close to the net that was just a drive to the net shove it, and, and not shove it but you know redirect it into the net not saying unskilled but you know he can he can do those things and when you do that, the rest of your game seems to open up. And then Connor Brown, that's a goal scorer's goal. You know, you come down and you fire it from distance and top shelf. Like, that is really healthy. So, you know, you got Connor Brown going, um, and we'll just say since the trade deadline. Nuge scores for the first time in a while. Kane continues to get shots. Had the breakaway tonight. Um, you know, did, didn't go for him. He had two cracks at it. But it feels like he's starting to come. You know, they... There, there, there feels to be like more guys starting to chip in here with goals, uh, but getting Nuge off and Brown is two out of the three guys. Now you got to get, uh, got to get the big man Kane going too. Okay, time now for the You Can Youth Services Relentless Player of the Night. If you're looking for laborers for your business, You Can Youth Services can help. They train 18 to 25 year olds, getting them ready, willing, and able to join the workforce. Check out their Road to Work program at www.youcan. Dot C-A. Stretty, who we got tonight? Corey Perry. And, you know, he, he's not going to show up on a lot of the stat sheets tonight other than that five. But I just love that he just gets it. You know, there aren't a lot of players that get it anymore about how that can impact your team. And people are saying, wow, well, fighting doesn't make a difference. In that moment, it does. Because your teammates... You know, he there was he was not the favorite in that fight. Let's just put it that way. You know, no one thought, oh, this will be a spanking for Perry. So he goes in there, takes on uh, a much bigger man, and kind of kind of just was involved in the play. So I, I I like that for Corey Perry. Relentless tonight. Love it. All right, that was the breakdown brought to you by Adrenaline Diesel. Uh, coming up next in our takeaway segment, Struds. I I was kind of torn on whether we were going to even address this or not, but there are all kinds of people in the stream that are making comments and asking about it. Um, the Twitter post that Andrew Berkshire did about Zach Hyman and his 50th goal. Uh, we're going to touch on that briefly. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but we'll get to that in takeaways. Talk a little bit about Stu Skinner and some other things that we uh, saw from tonight's game. So that is coming up after the break. And a reminder that Struddy's appearance on the podcast brought to you by Kinprint, a local company, family-owned. 
decades of experience filling any and all of your promotional apparel embroidery needs. Check them out online at kinprint.ca. Here's some of their handiwork. By the way, we do have hats for sale on the website. If you go to uh, gybpod.com, gybpod.com, and up in the top right corner, if you click on Edmonton, then up in the top right corner, it says GYB swag. And uh, yeah, you can order some hats online. You don't actually pay for them right on the website. Just fill out the order sheet and send it to us and we'll get it all sorted out. And then uh, also we'll give away a hat uh, coming up a little bit later on in the show. Takeaways is coming up. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. Winter is upon us, so why not make the best of it? Marmot Basin Ski Resort is where it's at. Ski half price every day, no blackout periods. Pick up your escape card for 99 bucks and make winter fun more affordable. Half the price, all the powder. Get yours at www.skimarmot.com. Muted sugar. Time now for takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. If you haven't tried e-biking, see how it can make your ride a little easier and exciting with a Vamoose electric bike. Whether you're a first-time buyer or an avid biker, there is a Vamoose bike model for you. From the streets of Edmonton to off-road mountain adventures, you go to... You got to get on one of these things and give it a go. Sorry, I'm having trouble need my glasses tonight. Made right here in Edmonton. That's cool. Sold to Martin Motorsports. Stop by their West or South Edmonton locations to demo one today. We'll have to get some pictures of one of those things for you and show you what that actually looks like. Uh, okay, we'll get to the Andrew Berkshire stuff uh, in a couple of minutes, Struds. Um, so notable to me, and this is I'm not going to pile on at all, nothing like that, but... Again, late in a game, a couple of moments that were kind of critical moments and a little bit of lackadaisical stuff from Evan Bouchard on the wall there. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> what you felt about his game overall, Struds. These are the things I noticed with him because he's on the ice in the important yeah. moments. Some people on the stream were mentioning it as well. Uh, some comments had come in. I wasn't sure I was going to say anything, but people are thinking it as well. What do you think? Was there, What was the concern level for you about that play on the wall in that moment at that point in the game from him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this is this is an ongoing thing with Evan Bouchard. That's why I'm he, bringing it up. He, that's that's why yeah, I'm bringing but, it up, not because I got a bone to pick. Right, but, yeah. So let me let me just explain what I'm going to say before I get torn apart by some of our listeners. The thing that makes Evan Bouchard great offensively is his calmness with the puck, and his uh, like when he enters the zone, like you know you, you'll see it. He feels pressure. He turns away and he kind of waits for the guy to turn away. Then he then he he makes his play. The, the same thing, though, that struggles for defense is the fact that he's so calm. Yeah. And, and it, 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 like, it's hard to have both sides of that coin doing the same thing. You know, Generally speaking, when you're on defensive side, you want to have massive amounts of urgency. Then on the offensive side, you can have that calmness. And in a lot of ways, I'm going to compare him to a guy that we all know very well, Kevin Bieksa. You know, he's on TV and, you know, he was a hard-nosed player on the defensive side. But with the puck... At times, he was almost painful how calm he was with the puck. And he got burned sometimes. He wasn't as skilled as M. Bouchard. So it burned him sometimes. You hang on to it too long. But, you know, so so for Evan, it's it's, it's just that, that, that keep moving that calmness kind of into your offensive game and kind of out of your defensive game. So I know the player you're talking about, and I, I, and I know what everyone's thinking and saying, but you're going to have that in his game because I believe sure. that's just how he's wired. He's wired as a very calm and and you know the old ice in their veins is is what he has it's just you don't need a lot of ice in your veins defensively you like it on the offensive side of the puck yeah and i think you put that really well i think everything that you said was completely fair and and people will think that 
you know, because I've talked about this a few times that, I, that I'm piling on. Or I, I'll take Evan Bouchard's offense seven days a week and have to deal with this kind of stuff, right? He's a fantastic defenseman, one of the best offensive defensemen in the NHL. He's got one of the best shots in the NHL. He's a great puck mover. He's absolutely critical to this whole operation. Of that, there is absolutely no debate. But where my concern level comes from is that, it, you know, in a tie game, you want him out there because you need the offense. But he's displaying traits where you, you might only, you know, if you're down a goal, maybe you put him out in the last minute or two, right? Like he's he's displaying these traits where in these pressure pack moments, you know, he doesn't necessarily bring the requisite sense of urgency. And I've got my eye on the playoff struts. I'm thinking all about the size of moments in the playoffs and how you need to click in, right? If you're that way through the first two and a half periods, I mean, whatever, so be it. But these are moments where it's like, this is the time to dig in. And I think if he could maybe click into that mode in those moments, I don't expect him to be a defensive stalwart all the time, but just recognizing this is one of those moments I got to click in and make sure. And I just think that message needs to hit home for him so that there's less of those things that we're seeing. Fair? Yeah, I, I do. So let's put into context what it's like for a forward. So I believe there are the games that one, I think that he needs to tie it up is just his play along the wall with and without sure. the puck in his own zone, right? That urgency. I, I think we've seen it when he has the puck, when he doesn't have the puck, that's what he has to do. So f to, to compare it to a forward, I believe it's when they get at to their blue line, the puck has to go out or make a play with it, or you get to offenses blue line, you have to take it deep or, or, you know, whatever, make a play at that point. And, and that's, you know, when, when you see wingers that can't get it out in their own blue line, that's kind of what I'm talking about with Evan Bouchard and his play along the wall. Like that, those are the same areas of the game. It's just, it's along the wall or in and around the wall, but you have to get it done. And I think so, you know, we have seen some Oilers forwards struggle with that. And when the Oilers are playing well, that part for the forwards isn't in their game. But that's true for every team that's yep. ever played any game in the history of hockey. And then I'll point to the 1-1 one -one goal. He started the play out, made a, re made a really nice... I think he was under duress. Really nice pass up the ice. And then uh, McDavid made the great pass to Fogel. And then Fogel made a really nice uh, feed over to Leon Dreisaitl. I, I think that's the, the order that that went in. But Bouchard started that play. So, um, you know, had a decent night uh, tonight moving the puck. But just something that we pay attention to and notice here and there. We didn't talk yeah. about Stewart's... Yeah. No, just let me make one more comment. I thought it was really interesting when Darnell Nurse in the penalty box... Bouchard has been getting that penalty kill time. Instead, it was Kulak in a really important moment. I thought that was really, uh, to use the word, notable uh, that uh, notable. It was Kulak and not Bouchard in that moment. Like, really, I honestly, I, I really thought that was a very, very important moment for, for Oilers and, and Kulak. Oh, Quadi just said Josh Doan just scored on the stream here, oh, Stretty. Wow. Yeah, I'll yeah, let you Josh take a look Doan. at that. Hey? Yeah. Yeah, not to get too excited, but uh, he so Sh Shane Doan uh, was a former team of mine, a junior, and I, I knew his son a little bit. Josh, I met him a few times. He got called up for his first game in the NHL for Arizona. Um, second round pick, I think that's a really hard place to be drafted when your dad mm -hmm. is an icon, and they draft him. And I, I probably wouldn't want that for my son, but it's worked out really well. Everything Josh has had an incredible season. I think he's got forty five points in the minors. Is uh, you know he's doing really well. And if he has indeed scored his first goal tonight, congrats to him. That is, yeah. he seems to have been you know, on a good trajectory, obviously with his dad being who he is. I'm sure his dad has, you know, been, been in his ear. So that was going to be one of our elements for take a lap. So you'll have to think of another one on the fly, yeah. but awesome night. Yeah, uh, thanks, Quaddy. Just uh, killed yeah. me. Just killed, <laughs> just, just killed, just killed me. That was an hour of work, Quaddy. Thanks, bud. Uh, yeah, okay. Anything else uh, you want to jump in with? <laughs> real quick from Nathan Jameson. He says, I would never take Darren R Derek Ryan out of this lineup again. PK noticeably better. He was a big factor. So reliable in all situations. Him and Yanmark should start majority D zone draws. So no Sam Carrick in the lineup tonight. And you had Connor Brown yeah. and you had Derek Ryan. What do you think of that comment? Well, um, Connor Brown had a good game, scored a goal. You had nice um, goal. goal scorers goal. That'll here, ignite a fire yeah. or rekindle something. It will. Derek Ryan had a nice moment, a, a few nice moments, but that one I've specifically alluded to at the end. I think that was at the end of the third period, if I'm correct. And they got it down the ice with Shifley. Uh, a he nice drew a play penalty on, on too, strong didn't he? Player. Going to the net. 
Uh, I did. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So there's two good plays. Then Jan Mark is just generally in the right place. Like he just does the right thing. So there is going to be competition. Like that fourth line feels like it's those three guys and Carrick fighting for a spot. Yeah. Um, what Carrick brings that those three guys don't have is a little bit more size, a little more heaviness yeah. than those three guys. That's Isn't what it he interesting to a lineup. Isn't it interesting? I mean, they traded for a bit of depth up front, and now we're seeing competition for ice time. They're actually putting players in the lineup and jockeying back and forth and giving <laughs> yeah. everybody an opportunity to fight for that ice time. I wonder why we're not seeing the same thing on the blue line. I think it's pretty clear that those six are the six. Yeah. I, I really do feel that CC way. CC had a good I night tonight too, clear. by the way, right? Yeah, fair point. Fair yeah, point. I think yeah. CC was decent tonight. Anyways, I, I wanted to maybe Stature would get into a game after a couple of losses, but if you're ever going to put in a line lineup struds that you think this is our playoff lineup, it's against yeah. the Winnipeg Jets tonight, yeah. right? That's what they wanted to see. Oh, oh, fair point. Fair point. And I will say on the back end, they've got to get Broberg some NHL games towards the end of the year here. They're running out of games, man. I, I think it's imperative that he plays NHL games. Stoff uh, said at one of the intermissions that he could see a call up in the last week of the season or something like that. I think he had mentioned, um, and he normally okay. has a yeah. pretty good sense of that. So, uh, okay. Uh, this Andrew Berkshire thing. Um, listen, he went on Twitter and basically made the point that all the journalists of the world are missing the story, that it's journalists' job to do uh, a good job digging deep and telling stories. And the real story of Zach Hyman's 50 goals that's being missed is that he was raised in a family that had money and privilege that came with that and training opportunities and that it's, yes, sure, he works hard and everything, but he basically spent a few minutes minimizing Hyman's accomplishments by suggesting that the <laughs> privileges he had earlier on in his life are yeah. the bigger story that everybody's missing and really what we all should be reflecting on and talking about today because he's a journalist that's journalisming um, with that Twitter post. Um, listen, I, I don't pile under other media guys. Like I, I generally, the fans are more than willing to pile on to us. Uh, so I'm not going to go too far with this. Um, obviously you, on the stream here, people are quite, they're having a laugh over, over it and making a lot of interesting comments. Um, I think it was kind of garbage and I, I disagree. There is absolutely a conversation to be had about the inequities out there and that how, you know, there were different opportunities for some than others in terms of a sport that can be hard to get to financially. And there is definitely a conversation and a very important conversation that needs to be had about that but taking zach hyman reaching 50 goals and deciding that needs to be the overriding narrative because you're a journalist um yeah i'm a journalist too never crossed my mind once so completely disagree struds all right let me step in here i'll, I'll take a shot at him I'll, I'll i'll be the bad guy so um listen it, it, there's no doubt he has a rich family, but I've seen many rich athletes who don't work as hard as Zach Hyman. So I don't think that hard, hard work is not what everyone is programmed to do. And, you know, his point is all made. Almost everyone in the NHL has worked hard to get there. There's no doubt. But has everyone worked that hard to get to the level he has? Have they done the extra? When your buddies go to the lake, do you stay back and keep shooting pucks or do you do the workout or do you stay after practice? Or like it, it, there is working hard, then there's going over the top working hard. And he does not understand it. This guy does not understand the level that Zach had to put in, the work he had to put in over a number of years to get to that level. And it wasn't one, one summer. It wasn't three seasons. He's been putting that in for years to get to the point where he is today. So it's actually disrespectful to Zach Hyman to suggest that he only, his only skill is hard work. I wish that my kids only have the effort of hard work. That's what I hope their biggest trait is when they grow up. And so for this guy, who I don't think he understands hard work, judging by you know these comments. And so it's really disappointing to hear a guy who is and has been around the game not understand the value of hard work. There's no doubt. You can, you can put the young hockey players and put them in the best camps, put them in all the things they want. It doesn't mean they're going to work hard. And I've seen it. I've seen a lot of times, you know, people, they put their kids in a lot of stuff and they're not trying. And that's fine. They don't have to try. Not everyone is energized by hockey or volleyball or golf or math or whatever it is. But Zach is energized by being a hockey player. So I, I it is so disrespectful. And uh, I quite frankly, I find it to be a joke. Uh, he's a joke. And I'll, I'll say it. You won't say it, Chogger. I'll say it. 
He's a joke. Yeah, I think I think what he said in that post was, um, you know, I'm not going to indict his entire body of work because I'm not overly familiar with it. But yeah, I definitely disagreed with it. And and that's not to say that there isn't a conversation that needs to be had about making the game more attainable for more people, right? I mean, you know, you think about all the work that is done in and around hockey circles to that end. Um, you know, lots of charities here in town and lots of the media guys and the players and everybody are all engaged in that. So there's definitely an important conversation. But deciding that that's the journalism that needs to be done when Zach Hyman gets his 50th, off point. Uh, what else we got? Stuart Skinner? You want to talk about Stuart Skinner? Did we go there? I thought he was good early. Okay, that's But, that's, you know, sometimes for a goalie, you just have to be good when your team needs you. And I'm not suggesting he wasn't good the rest of the game. That's that's not my point. But, they, you know, the, the Oilers weren't – like Winnipeg came out pretty hard. They, they were going – and he made a couple of key saves early, as did Hellebuck, to be fair. I thought Hellebuck had a pretty good game. Um, and, man, the Jets are good around the net. Like, they're good at their sticks, like tipping and getting pucks on stick. Like, their demon are good at getting it through the net. But I thought Skinner was good when he needed to be to kind of support his team and just give him a little bit of breathing space. Yep, solid uh, performance from him. He's got to go against L.A., right? I mean, if he's your playoff starter and they're the playoff Huge. opponent, like, you've got to roll him out there against the Kings. Huge game. Huge game. Yeah, I, I think I, I think this, you know, the two points for the Oilers got say were huge, and they still have a game at hand. But that's a huge game, man, because it could be home ice advantage on the line. Absolutely, Struddy, you brought it this segment. You're getting a lot of love in the stream. Shane Matheson says, Struddy, you the man. Struddy, captain, my captain says, Chris Starr. <laughs> Gomez says, Struddy finishing his check there, and Strud's five head says you know struds is fired up when those lips are kicking up all That's where i lost that one <laughs> you know strud he's fired up when those lips are kicking up spit all over his camera <laughs> so people love it more you. chapstick i'll reapply chapstick, the chapstick yeah. for you yeah apply some for us there struds uh okay we've got uh, take a lap struddy's world and ask us anything still ahead stay with us the Brindley family has made it their mission to create the best tasting flavor rums on the planet, and they've knocked it out of the park with their shipwreck rums. Brewed off the small Caribbean island of St. Kitts, their spice rum is aged four years in bourbon barrels and infused with natural vanilla. Their shipwreck vanilla is blended with natural Madagascar vanilla, giving it an incredible smoothness. One sip and you'll agree, it truly is a vacation in a bottle. Available at your local liquor retailer. Please enjoy responsibly. Okay, heroes, are you trying to tough it out through a sports or life injury right now? Trying to prove your mettle by grinding through, gritting your teeth? Well, Redefined Health is here to say it's time to come on in. At Redefined Health, they'll high-five you for your toughness and then get to work on helping you fix the problem. Helping athletes and heroes find better balance, performance, and injury prevention, visit RedefinedHealth.com. I'm now to take a couple of laps brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. Just got even better with the new Backscape 2.0. Engineered with their new friction fit handle lets you effortless, effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of your body. Isn't it funny? Is it ironic that I mess up the word effortlessly almost every single night? I think there's irony there. I'm not sure. The new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Go to Backscape.com. we got a promo code for you. GYB10. That is GYB10 for 10% off. Advanced and Deluxe 2.0 kits. That's Backscape. B-A-K-scape.com. Stay smooth, gentlemen. Well, the Preds just keep on rolling. Uh, down 4-1 to Vegas tonight. 4-2, 4-3, 4-4. Roman Yossi, his 19th goal uh, in overtime to win it 5-4. So the Preds are now, I believe it's four points behind the, the Jets uh, in the Central uh, Division, which crazy. is pretty incredible. That I, I want to say it's 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 a crazy run they're on. Was it 18 straight with a point? I think it's at now. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, 16 0 2. I think. I think oh. it's somewhere somewhere in there. We're we're around the same number, so it's a hell of a lot. Um, what a run these guys are on. I keep looking at their lineup. I'm like, how are these guys doing it? Like, you know, they're, they're, there's definitely talent there. But, you know, you got your Riley Smick, Phil Forsberg. Their their D yeah. is pretty solid. Um, but it, it, it just feels like 
they're really overachieving, but if they're getting it done, man, Nyquist, Riley, Forsberg, all these guys, Josie, uh, it's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Okay, so let me let me ask you this, Struds. Put you on the spot here a little bit. Put in order the teams in the Western Conference that you would not want to face in the first round. Put them in order. Oh man, um, the number one team you would not want to face: Colorado, Dallas. Colorado, Dallas. Mm -hmm. Um, probably Winnipeg. Mm hmm. Uh, Vancouver. Uh huh. Um, probably Vegas. Uh huh. And then L.A. Nashville. <laughs> Yet they're playing the best I know. out of any of them. I know. Funny? I agree. And that's and I so I'm I keep you wrong. I know I keep looking at their lineup. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Right. Like they're um Roman Yossi is their second lean scorer with 70, I think 72 points, right? Yeah. And that's it's exciting. Like it's fun to watch. I know, but I'm like, are these guys for real? And I guess at some point you may have to say, and it's they are real. Um, but can they keep this up? Or are they on just a massive heater? Like it's it's pretty incredible, man. I don't know what am I off? Like what is, is you, your rank? Would they be similar to my rankings? Yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have them much higher. I mean, okay, let me I'll change the question and ask you this. Okay. If you could pour truth serum into, I don't know, Chris Knobloch or the Oilers, and you could say to them, you get Nashville in the first round over whoever you might be playing, let's say LA. You want them? I mean, they take them. I, the chew on the Predators like for fun. Leon Dreisaitl, it's like points night every night. But they're finishing so strong. Yeah. So let's let's listen to their lines here. Forsberg or Riley Nyquist. That's yeah. a pretty good first line. That's not an unreal first line, but it's a pretty good first line. I know that there's a guy with 40, 25, and 20 goals. But if would you like? Would you feel comfortable with uh, Connor, Nuge, and Hyman against that yes. line? Yes. Of course I think, he would. And that's with all due respect to Ryan O'Reilly, who's having a, a great year. Next line, Jason Zucker, Colton Sissons, Anthony Bolivier. Both two of those guys have been traded for. Uh, you know, it, would you mind having Leon and whoever, Henrik, and uh, who is it, Fogel against those guys? I think you're yeah. feeling pretty good about that. Yeah. And then he dropped down to Novak, uh, Evangelista, uh, you know, some other guy. I'm like – what the hell's going on here? But then you look at their back end, Yossi, Luke Shen's, you know, doing what he does. You know, Ryan McDonough, great, great leader. Tyson Berry's back in there. But it's just like, I don't, they're playing really well as a team, but it's the, the individual pieces aren't overwhelming. They're just playing really well as a team. Not just, they are, and I value that. They're playing really well as a team, Shogger. What do you got next, buddy? Um, oh, Trevor Zegers getting back his first game since mm. uh, like January 5th or something. Uh, broken ankle, 31 games. And to, to me, this guy is the most polarizing player in the league. This is why he's he's fun to watch, he's entertaining and warm up. You know, he does a lot of neat things, you know, throwing the puck over and guys hitting the and, and hitting it and all that stuff. But I, it doesn't feel like he's the guy that's going to lead you to the promised land. And the Ducks, there's a lot of rooms they're going to move him. So there's a handful of games here left. You know, do they move him? You know, Cronin, the coach was asked, what do they want from him? They want He wants a solid game in all three zones. That's very clear. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very clear mandate. Yeah. And I don't know if Zegras can deliver that. Yeah. Um, I think this is really interesting, buddy. I, I, I know you don't love this conversation, but for a team trying to build the right way, is he the guy that is going to bring that for your lineup night in, night out? I have, I have, no, I have no issue whatsoever with this conversation. I mean... What's he signed for, Struds? He signed for two more yeah. seasons at five point seven five million. Yeah. Why would you move this player? Why would you move him? Because you think by the time you turn into a good team in five years, that he's showing signs he might not play the right way now. Like you need offensive players. He's going to. He's going to play to this contract. He'll be fine at this number. And because you can't get three zone play out of him right in this moment with a new coach on a floundering team, I don't know, man. I would not trade a player with this skill level because in this mess of a team they've got going, he's not displaying the characteristics you think are going to help you hoist a cup. Build a team around him. He doesn't need to be the absolute centerpiece. He's not paid like it yet. And he's got another full season to either earn it or not. Why would you trade him? 
because you have Leo Carlson and Mason McTavish. That's your one-two centers, and Zegras doesn't fit in that. He's not a third-line center. So maybe he can be a winger. Well, what do maybe we know about center struts? I mean, the Oilers have three first-line centers or close right. to it, and they when have for watched, years, and it served them wonderfully. Right. This, this is going to be very unpopular with a segment of our listeners, whom I love, by the way. Trevor Zegras is not a player who's going to dig down and grit it in when you need him the most. And and that's not who he is. We've seen McTavish do it. I don't know about Leo Carlson either. How do you know? Either. How do I know? How do you know? How, can you, go, like, how do you know? Okay. Because with McTavish, I saw it at the World Juniors. He fought. He made a mistake. He fought back, got it, knocked a puck out on the goal line. Literally on the goal line. To help his team get it all the way there and score, I don't see that. Zegers. I think Zegers loves to be entertaining, and that's great. It's it, entertaining is fun. You know, I love going to the circus and movies as well. But if you want to win, I don't believe this is the guy. And I wonder if that organization feels like he is. I'm uh, just saying he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't need to. You don't have to hang the C on him and make him the centerpiece of the whole operation. You've got <laughs> lots of good players coming that are going to play the right way. Not every other forward plays the right way. Not everybody like. It's okay to have a guy who's a dangler and then you negotiate with him and you build some maturity into his game so that it's in a place that's doable when it comes to playoff. He has no body of work in the playoffs. I'm looking at his hockey DB right now. He's got eight playoff games in his life, and it was 17-18. Now, outside of the international competition, but I'm not prepared to say that this guy isn't going to show up in playoff hockey when it matters. He, he hasn't played any hockey that has mattered and but, hasn't but, had the opportunity. He's got tons of skill. His number isn't that bad. Hang on to this guy. See what your team looks like. See what other guys are doing. You know, Maybe they'll find a perfect spot where he fits great with these young guys that are coming. Maybe he'll have amazing chemistry. Like It's way too I, early to trade this player. I've watched some Ducks games where it got heavy in a regular season mm -hmm. and Zegras exited stage left. Now, yeah. You no, know, he's a young player. There's no doubt, but they have lots of young players there. And um, I'll be interested, man, to see what happens. I, I this That's why this is a, a very divisive player. He's, he's the type of player that's very, very, very divisive for a lot of a lot of fans. And, I can and, see how people would feel like it's trending that way. You look at the numbers, you look at the, like, look at his minus 21, minus 24, but he's playing on teams that are not winning games. And doing very little. So the stats, the attitude, the you know, hasn't been shown the way by the by the veteran group necessarily. Like I don't know, I'd be interested in Corey Perry's opinion on this uh, on this player. Yeah, if you we could we could ask him if yeah. he would actually give us a, Fair point. a really truthful, Fair honest point. answer. Uh, great stuff. That was taking a lap. When we come back, Strutty's world and ask us anything. Time to talk about your mortgage. It doesn't have to be a daunting conversation. With over 16 years in the industry, Maria Gallus with Maximal Mortgages knows how to make it easy. With access to dozens of different lenders, let Maria customize the perfect solution for you. Whether you're purchasing, refinancing or renewing, or a first time buyer, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you feeling confident you're in great hands making informed decisions. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track man simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18 hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop and warm friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvederegcc.com. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here. Someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy, look good. <laughs> 
<laughs> Time out for Strutty's World, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products, where they have locations in Calgary and in Edmonton. Whether you're a homeowner, a contractor, or a builder, DLR is the most reliable source for vinyl fence. Opened in 2005, they're not going anywhere. Unmatched service, high quality North American made products. Visit DLR vinylproducts.ca of course that is the family company brother rick runs the branch here in edmonton son ben and carson at times have worked there as well donna mom does the books for dlr company my dad last started my late father and rob runs the branch out in calgary proud of it if you need maintenance free fencing they are definitely the place to go highly recommend it struds It's great to Whoa. see. Big breath. No, no, I'm pause. Just... <laughs> Pregnant it's, it's... pause. <laughs> I love when a team kills penalties like the did tonight. I believe it brings so much energy uh, to your lineup, but more importantly, it brings a lot of energy to your, what I would call, you know, quote unquote, bottom six players and kind of, and your D, who obviously are the, the backbone of every good hockey team. And what I saw tonight after the kill at the end of the third period was a captain recognizing that. I don't know if anyone saw in the broadcast, but Connor McDavid went around to the penalty killers that were out there, Fogel, uh, Dearnay, I want to say Derek Ryan, and he went and gave them a high five. It was just a quick, maybe five second clip, but I saw him tap at least three guys. And, and I love that. Him recognizing, say, okay, you guys did your job. Now we're going to go do our job. And that is such a great thing by a leader. I can't tell you. How good that feels when your captain, especially someone like Conor McDavid, skates by and says, hey, and high-fives you and goes and finds you to say thank you for doing that. Now we got to go get the other two points. So that's just leadership 101. Uh, and I think that builds a lot of confidence um, for those players that our captain believes in what we're doing. Because those guys, remember, they were sitting on the bench. He and Leon mm -hmm. are sitting on the bench waiting for them to kill this penalty. I love that moment. It was a great moment by Connor and... Uh, I think it's really going to help this team and just tells it what kind of group they are. Struddy, this was a great Struddy's world. I want to thank you for your effort. I want to <laughs> high five you and tell you that that was really meaningful yeah. to me. I think it helped this show be good. Great. Nice work, buddy. Uh, yeah. I, I think feeling you're, being, you're having right now? Do you I think, think you're, you're I think you're being a little facetious if no, that's the word I can not, use. But, I'm not. I actually I, mean it, but I just, no. I'm articulating it to you so no, you but, can experience it. <laughs> What no. they experienced. You know what? I need it when I do a bad one. Sometimes I have bad ones. I say there's the odd one that spills out that just goes terribly bad. <laughs> this one I knew was going to be good because it, I think that we have we all saw it. And I just, I love that moment from a captain. Just I, I didn't see it. I missed it. So you, oh, it's, you okay. taught me something. It's such a valuable, it's just such a great moment in that time. And I, the only thing I can compare it to, and not, well, I've had a few experiences, but like I'd get into a fight and after the fight would happen, I'd come back to the bench when I played for, I was very young. And Keno would just come down and tap me on the shoulder. And Mass sometimes would skate by and just give me like a wink. And I was like, boom. Like, I'm doing the right thing. And that's a loose just, wink. It goes so far. It goes, he gave me those eyes. <laughs> so, <The> eyes. <laughs> so this is part of leadership. And this is part of the evolution of leadership. And Conor McDavid is older. He's more mature. And I noticed it two seasons ago from watching this team practice he clearly started to try and take a little bit of ownership over helping some other players develop and helping some other players bring out different parts of their game. It wasn't just about him and working on his skills, right? Each player, that's their responsibility, but you could tell. And from what I understand behind the scenes, there's a lot that the, of that that goes on, that Connor McDavid plays a very active role in trying to help each player get the most out of their game. It's like he's taking care of almost everything he can on the ice struts. Almost everything that he can take care of himself, he's got maximized and firing at 100. <laughs> so then, but he's not getting the results. And so now he's looking around going, okay, you have to control the things that you can control. What else can I control? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to help. Let's, let's go talk to Ryan McLeod about, about this or that, or let's have a constructive conversation and, and provide some feedback. And like He is taking more ownership trying to control the things that he can because the results haven't been there and it's not like he can do a lot more. His defensive game has come around from earlier in his career. 
This is about just trying to squeeze everything he can out of everything around him too. Yeah. So he he's maxed himself out or he's, you know, he's, he's, he's working. Let's just say, put it this way. He's, he's really working to max himself out. A job as a leader is to help, especially the young guys, find ways to help them max themselves out. Because you're not on the ice all the time. And it's a five-man game. This isn't bowling where it's just you, your wrist brace, and you're just throwing balls down the aisle. You need everyone when you're on the ice and not on the ice to contribute. So I think it makes a big, big difference um, when when players do this and, and help their teammates practice hard. Because really, if you practice against Connor McDavid, you know, I know they don't practice a ton, but when when he goes hard and you practice hard against him, there aren't many players who are gonna be faster or as dangerous as him with the puck on a stick. Uh, always trust the the Weiss Johnson YouTube stream to bring us back down to earth. Chris Rombo says brutal Strutty's world, and Freezer Bag says I miss Brownie. So that's that's a, well, that's Brownie's <laughs> handle. So he he put that in himself. Is Brownie Freezer Bag? Freezer yeah. Bag is some kind of chirpy on the YouTube yeah. stream tonight. He is firing darts, trying to get me to bite. I'm not biting right. Freezer Bag. You know what you said. I'm not biting <laughs> on that one, but appreciate you. You're consistent. You're a little prickly, but you are consistent. Northern Farm Girl offsets Freezer Bag. Freezer Bag <laughs> brings the negative energy. Northern Farm Girl. Hey, Steve-O, she's just bringing the love, bringing the yeah. light to the pot They're again. They're polar tonight. opposites. I, <laughs> freezer, freezer bag has, he's got, he's got something going on tonight for sure. You see, him trying, to, you see him trying to goad me into that stuff <laughs> yeah. earlier? I, I saw he, that. He needs a hug. You'll have to go back and watch the stream and look for the comment. I'm not even going to tell you what he said. He's, he's definitely trying to <laughs> trying to draw me into the fight. All right, let's give away a hat, shall we? Strutty, you came up with a trivia question. So here's the deal. Um, Idea, you got to be kind of a local uh, local person to win this because you got to pick it up at DeBoer's, but you're also going to get $25 of store credits at DeBoer's when you go pick it up. So here's how you enter gybpod.com, then click on uh, GYB swag up in the corner, and then send us the answer to the trivia question. Um, and then we will draw from all the correct answers and we'll let you know if you end up winning the hat. So that's gybpod.com is the website and click on GYB swag. Strutty, what do you got for a trivia question? How how intense are you going to be? You can make it easy or hard? No, or what are you doing? No, it, a bit of a thinker. The Winnipeg Jets franchise. Who is their all-time leader for goals scored? No. Oh. Now, this you did is this the, the other night. No, I did, but it's a little bit different. There, this is, awful, again, right? I'll, I'll say it again. The current Winnipeg Jets franchise, who is the all-time leader for goals scored? Last time it was which player for the Sabres has the most had the most goals in one year. And I, I'm into the goal scoring now, kind of right. in, a, in a goal scoring phase. Yeah. So well, again, I mean, that's, that's that's how you fed your family. Let's be honest, right? Your bread, and butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hand to mouth. So <laughs> again, the current Winnipeg Jets. There's an important word in there. Current Winnipeg Jets franchise. Who is the all-time leader in goals scored? Like it. Love it. Once again, gybpod.com. This giveaway is brought to you by uh, our good friends at Kinprint and by DeBoers as well. Spent some time at DeBoers. I got the new driver sent to me. Had to go warm it up oh, a little man. bit. Got the new uh, tailor-made QI-10 uh, driver struds. Oh, look out, buddy. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Buddy, did you get it over 200? <laughs> no, I didn't, but it was dead straight, my friend. And I got a good six iron. That second shot six iron on the 312-yard par four, or that's a, that, that's my bread and butter, yeah. pal. When you, when you get a seven wood in your bag, you know you're not hitting the ball very far. Like that's <laughs> That tells me your core, as Jack Michaels say, your core strength isn't yeah, there. <laughs> it's lacking. Definitely lacking. Uh, but if you've never had a bag fitting uh, at DeBoer's, you got to go do it, man. You, you just call them, make an appointment, you go in, they get you all sized up. Like we had a big discussion about the clubs that I'm using and why are you using those clubs? And we got into it right. and a heated debate. And you know what came out of it, Struds? The five yeah. iron is coming out of my bag. Right. And the seven wood is going in. No, I, I think it makes sense. When you hit a five wood, 160 yards, you don't need that. That should be oh, your five seven iron. iron. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you're being you're being funny. Yeah. Well, well, do you hit a five iron? Can you hit a five iron? It's a hard club to hit. <laughs> what? But I used to have a butter knife. I used to hit the one iron. I would. I love the one iron because it intimidate guys. You pull it off. Like what is that? It's the butter knife. One iron. And then uh, I, I I lost it. I got it. I didn't get a new one. 
All right. Highly recommend you go check out uh, the golf shop down at DeBoer's. It's a local company, right, too? You got to love that. Support the local yeah. company, Scotty and TJ and Al and the whole crew over there. They just take such great care. You walk in, big smiles on their faces. Uh, awesome place. And it's not too early to be thinking about that stuff. Let's get to Ask Us Anything. Brought to you by the Shark of the Park, Rini Buclan from Maxwell Devonshire Realty. All about amazing service for her client. Buying a house is a big deal. You need someone you know you can trust. So give her a call. 780-994-0280. Steve, you've jumped in here. You've got the uh, the toque and the guitars in the background. I don't know, Serge, <laughs> yeah. how would you describe what Steve is bringing here aesthetically? Mm -hmm. Looks like he was transported from the late 1990s from yes. Seattle Perfect. to our podcast. <laughs> that's that's, my, that's grunge, my style. Grunge material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like teen spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, fun fun stream tonight. Lots of people going back and forth. And uh, lots of positivity for the most part. A um, couple uh, sightings, uh, host sightings out in the wild. Uh, Tempo, Yo, Tempo Yo TV said, it was great to meet you yesterday at Golf Town, Ryan. And uh, Sean oh, Bros. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sean Bros said, I saw Strud's at Costco today. He's a giant. He's the rock, and Rashog is Kevin Hart. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, what? That's, that is very I'm nice. Six I, two. How it, tall are you, Strud's? <laughs> it's the shoulders. That's what a guy <laughs> says. It's a seven foot. You're, only, you're adding three inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Boy, Eric there. Parker yeah. said, uh, I was at the game tonight. Oilers fans travel well. It was probably around 25 to 30% Oilers fans. The few Jets fans wow. around me were complaining about the Jets' ineffectiveness on the power play. So, yeah, oh, nice to have someone who's at the game tonight. Um, talking about Derek Ryan, when you guys were going on a little bit earlier, uh, Shane Matheson said DR was definitely noticeable. Some stranger said Derek Ryan hits like Bouchard should. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think Darren Ryan, Derek Ryan does whatever he needs to to contribute to a win. That's what I think he does really well, right? He just, he, he's scrappy. He just gets, he's a veteran. Um, you know, Bouchard is much more offensive, obviously, um, at this point in his career. And I would like to see Bush. He doesn't have to hammer guys. I like to seal them more. Like if you watch Ekholm, Ekholm does lay some pretty decent size hits, but he, he just kind of pancakes guys into the wall. And I think that Bush could maybe go to that school of defense to learn that type of smothering. Yeah, I just think like... Uh... I don't think he's going to be a guy that runs out of position to hammer people. I don't think he needs to – that's not part of his game. That's not who he is. But just – yeah, just be stiff, right? Be stiff in front of the net. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to give out the stick now and then. Um, yeah, I, I find him fine for the most part in that way. It's just attention to detail in some big moments, just not ending up being a little bit lackadaisical and, and losing the thought in the moment. So the physical part of it, like – I'm not going to ask him to be that because he's never really been that. Just do your job, you know, be stiff in front of the net. It's just attention to detail in moments for me is the bigger issue. Uh, four Oilers coming to your defense said, I saw Shogger once at Rogers. I was surprised. I thought he was tiny until I saw him in real life. He's definitely at, le at least six feet. There you go, buddy. Yeah, for sure. He's at, he's almost <laughs> six feet. That's exactly, I've been saying that for years. I'm taking six too. I know you don't want to give it to me, Struds, but we measured here. My, cause my son is, my son's a pretty tall kid too. Uh, <laughs> my younger boy, Kai. And so we measured one day and it's yeah. depending on how dull the pencil is, it's sure. right in that six, two range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, Shane Matheson says, hey, Struddy, what should D-men do on those long shots? Should they just get out of the way or what, like what, what, what should they do in those situations? Well, the, the, number one, if you can, you try to box your guy out prior to his arrival in front of the net. Now, that's not always possible. Number two, tie up his stick so the goalie just has to worry about the save. Um, you know, we saw that on the second, or the, I guess it would be the third goal, um, Monaghan's, his stick wasn't tied up, he tips it, and now a player's kind of, a goalie's trying to react to a, a tip puck, which is way harder than a straight shot. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I always felt if I tied up the stick, I at least gave the goalie a chance to just make a save on the initial shot. Hmm. I like that. Can I ask you one, Struts? I was thinking this while I was watching it happen tonight. What's the proper strategy for fighting someone that's six foot seven? And how did Corey Perry do? 
Yeah, he did great. And, you know, it's hard. The, 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 the challenge when you're finding a, a, a bigger guy is that they're going to want to hold you out. And it's hard to get in tight. So when I fought bigger guys, I try to get in. I try to get in closer. Mm. But they're trying to push you out. So it's like a tug of war. Because the closer you are, then you can actually punch them. If you're really far away, you're not going to punch them, but they are going to punch you. Like when I fought guys my size, because my arms are so long, I would just stretch guys out and I wouldn't get punched. Um, so you want to try to get in tight and stay tight. Uh, but it's it's easier said than done. You yeah. know, like Logan Stanley's a big man, and I think he's actually pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say he's yeah. like he this isn't like uh doesn't fight a fights. ton though. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do think he's a pretty tough guy. So courage, a lot of courage shown there by Corey Perry. I love the timing of it. Okay, Pauly says, is there a stat for zone entries versus dump ins? The Oilers need to dump and get hungry. Everyone seems to want to carry the puck in. Do you guys get that feeling too, Shogger? Um, I would say that. Uh, there is a stat. It's an advanced analytic. I think Sport Logic maybe tracks it. Um, the owners are they're good with the puck on their stick, right? Especially their top couple of lines. Like they got some really skilled players, and they don't love dumping the puck in in a certain type of game. I think it's necessary. Um, but I'm less of a dump and chase guy, and more of a, I'm okay with trying to make a play if there's a play to be made there. So I think in playoff hockey, you got to get to that base game at times, but you also can't be afraid to make plays. And I don't think they they have the skill to not have to dummy it down too much, Stretty. Yeah, I, I don't I don't necessarily love like the long rims. Like I don't I don't love that. I think my favorite if you're gonna dump it in, you just dump it behind the D who's standing you up, so he has to turn and go get it. Then your your supporting centerman can come and get that puck. Yeah. Or the cross corner dump. I love cross corner dump. It's it's kind of going away though, right? It's you don't see it as much. But just imagine I'm skating up the ice. And I know that my let's say I'm a left winger, and I know my right wing is going to speed. Now I I go cross corner, go from the left side all the way to the opposite corner, and now my winger is going to get there first because the other D is standing up, and now we get possession of the puck. Because when you rim it, if it's not a good rim, the D, the goalie stops it. Um, so in order, it'd be short side dump to maybe top of the circles, then cross corner dump, and then the old classic hard rim. One, I got a lot of credit for. I was a very good dumper. I've been dumping well for years, and uh, but I I was I didn't like the hard rims. I was not a hard. I always try to just short side it or cross corner. Did you ever go in on the four check and wipe out after you dumped? No, I was pretty diligent. I, I I would sometimes if the momentum was going, I'd go in. I remember one time I, uh, this is a weird story, but I I think it was actually, I think we were playing in Anaheim. I was with the Canucks. And I, I I dumped it in. I I went and got it, and against the duck, I was holding the puck in the offensive zone, and nothing was really happening. But I was just holding it, and I I, I like I was really excited. Then I I gave it up to some to my team. But I went and changed. <laughs> And I remember I came off, I'm like, just like Jagger, just like Jagger. And all oh, the yeah. guys are looking down the bench like, what is this guy talking But I had it for probably like five seconds. It felt like the whole year I had it on my stick. But uh, That's awesome. it's a good feeling. Uh, Steve, before we move on from that, I just grabbed some stats from Sport Logic here. So this is what I do get after the game. Controlled entries were 53-53 each. Controlled entry success rate. So the number of times you have the puck on your stick on a controlled entry and actually gain the zone. 60.4 for Edmonton, 56. For Winnipeg, controlled exits were 86, 84. Very even. Hmm. Controlled exit success, 80, or 84 to 84, basically. And then puck battle win percentage, 71 for the Oilers, 28 for the Jets. That seems a little bit wonky, but uh, that's and then also notable from Sport Logic tonight. By the way, we got to get back to using these Sport Logic stats more yeah. often. Odd man rushes 15 4 tonight for the Winnipeg Jets. Wow. Wow. Uh, okay, Daryl Adams says, Strutty, will Vinny clean up his game over the next two years or will it just be more of the same? And I guess what he's getting at is like, you know, you get a player who's been playing for a long time, but he's new to the show. Um, what do you expect in terms of development from a player like Vinny? Well, I mean, he, he's never going to run the power play. I think he he's going to be a complimentary big man who plays with a more mobile, quick player would be probably my my favorite setup for him and a penalty killer, which is good. That's a good thing to be. Mm -hmm. but I just ask Erica Branson. He's done it for a long time. Um, so I guess you're asking me what's the ceiling for him. And, you know, he had an incredible summer last summer. Can he have the same improvement this summer? That'd be quite a step, but he knows how to do it. I think as he and his trainer probably refine it some more and get it more dialed in. But at some point you kind of hit your ceiling of what you can do. But I, I mean, he's definitely an everyday defenseman. Can he sink into a second pairing? That's the question that 
I still don't, I'm not sure of at this moment. Yeah, okay. I agree with all that. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, there's an injury in there, so we got to be careful with that. But um, he had some real positive momentum going and it was really pushing in the right direction and it stalled a little here. So let's, you know, let's, I think he needs to find that momentum that he had before and uh, keep pushing in the right direction. Uh, two more and then let's get out of here, Steve. Okay, an important one from Chris Rhombus. Strutty, you strike yep. me as a beef jerky guy. Are you? And if so, what's your go-to flavor mm. for beef jerky? I don't want to brag. I actually make my own uh, beef jerky. I what? home along with my own. I also make my own candles, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a smoker wow. at home, and uh, at why am I? I guess I'm at home. I have a smoker, and I put it. In. I like. I I I. I I like to try different things, but there's all, I'll tell you what, there's always one agreement. Lemon pepper is on every beef jerky I make. Delicious. Interesting. You make your own beef jerky. I've, I've, yeah. I've never tried that. Never heard of that. I don't. Yeah. Such I find a, a lot of men kind of do it right. Then. Such an interesting guy you are. <laughs> that, <laughs> like kudos to Chris Rummis for just randomly saying, <laughs> uh, Strutty well, seems like a beef jerky guy. We've yeah, never for sure. About that. Hey, put those knitting needles down and hop on the smoker for your beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's end with this one then. Uh, ben Husing says, uh, if the playoffs started today, who would, what would your lineup be and who, what would the lines be? We've we've talked about that lots before. But uh, yeah. Four Oilers says, uh, you know, let's just talk about the second um, the second line. So, what is that second line if playoffs were to start tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. Uh, if playoffs started tomorrow, <laughs> second line, Nugent Hopkins, Dreis Heitel, and uh, Papa Fogel. I, I think that we can now say pretty comfortably it's Fogel and Dreis Heitel. I thought they had some good chemistry. Um, you know, Fogel's looking for Leon, and, you know, Leon, you know, he's, he's getting his touches. Um I just I want to say Kane so badly in there. I, I just I he needs I to be. Needs yeah, to be. I, I. You know what, I guys, I'll tell you. What, I'll have an answer in about. Uh, I don't know about twenty nine days. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that that's, that's the whole yeah. question, though, right? I mean, first practice before game one. Yeah, I'll I, be tweeting I, furiously. Yeah, and I still don't. Yeah, and the thing is, it might not last a game two, Shugger. It's it's very much in flux. Uh, by the way. The, the Dr. Carpy asked, Shoggy, are you ceiling mounting your projector or going short throw for the simulator? Appreciate the question. I've been doing tons and tons of research. Mounted <laughs> mounted it late last night. Went with the short throw, but ceiling mounted. And so I, I'm not going to give away too much here, but guys, like it's happening. It is happening. Total do-it-yourself job so far. Doing it all myself. Mm-hmm. And I am beyond excited. So a little bit of help from the crew at DeBoers hooking me up with some stuff. And yeah, man, Struds. Why do you keep saying there's so much, like, why do you keep saying I've done so much research? It's just a sim. Don't you just put it, set it up and walk away. It's not like you're researching oh, quantum mechanics. Like, let's, oh, let's get a little bit understanding. There is so, I mean, I'm doing this myself. There is so much, so many things, Struds. Like what? What do you mean? Like, well, I'm not just buying like a stock one that you just put up and walk away. I'm not, this isn't a prefabbed. I'm building it from scratch using implements and my hands. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like the structure, everything I'm doing. It's a DIY. It's not like you're building a, like a, a battle zone, uh, you know, <laughs> operating room. You're, you're, you're oh. literally just put a screen and one of the trackers behind you. And oh, maybe buddy. a little bit of a, a, a wind to feel the wind on your face. I, I <laughs> Simulator <laughs> syndrome. You ever heard of simulator syndrome? Simulator syndrome is when you don't do a good enough job building your enclosure and two or three out of every 150 balls comes flying back at you because you haven't done a good enough job with the padding. And slowly over time, that subconsciously works its way into your game and you are right. not able to swing normally in your simulator and you can wreck your game. Simulator syndrome. I found that out, Struds, because I did research, and now I will have a properly padded internal enclosure f for the simulator. Shogger, I've seen your club head speed. I'm not worried <laughs> about that ball coming back. And I, I, I mean that as a friend. Like, well, we're playing. I, we're playing. 
It's That's on. the last thing I'm worried about. <laughs> it is on, buddy. I'll come to your club. You come to my. Doesn't matter. But it's we, we're there's so much chirping going on about my golf game that it is definitely on. I've seen summer. more club head speed on a putter on a ten foot putt than on your your full on drive. <laughs> That's not untrue. It's not untrue. But I'm six foot two and I'm a twelve <laughs> handicap, bud. So oh, God. deal with it. Uh, time now for our gem of the night. I'm not sure we're going to beat uh, Struddy talking about how good he is at dumping. I don't know if we're going to beat that or not, but I feel like we need to class it up a little more than giving yeah. it to giving it no, to no. that. No, I, I'm actually going to give it to you. I'm going to honor you with your repeated comment of, I've done so much research on a golf simulator for my garage. Like, oh, you're buddy. opening a shop there. I mean, You have like, no yeah. idea. I'm up at 6 a.m. watching YouTube videos over a coffee on how to do this properly. Let me tell you what I wish you were doing. I wish you were stretching and doing some core stabilizing exercises to help your game. That's what I think you should do. I'll send you some videos tonight. <laughs> Much appreciated. Always looking out for me. Always got my back, Stretty. Uh, Steve, class. good job tonight, my friend. Thanks, boys. That was great. Get All back right, to your jam you session. Hey, Steve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> got an intimate, and, intimate and interactive coming yeah, up right yeah. away. Singing yeah, ironic fun. acoustic songs with your puke <laughs> on. Uh, Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings on ba -ba -ba Thursday night, and we will do a full pod after that, breaking it down as well. Thanks to everybody that hopped in on the stream. We had a real solid number and lots of great interaction from everybody. We really appreciate it. And if you're listening to us on download the following day on audio, I hope you're having a fantastic day and look forward to chatting with you again on Thursday. Thanks to Sherwood Buick GMC, our title sponsor. See you guys. Night, Threads. Good night.